خیلی مشکر فرد آپورتون این حال معروف دیدید من اسم داریش خالقی و وادم گونه دو راجب دو تا ایونت که به قول معروف هپند که خیلی مهم بودش در زندگی نوجوانی مثلا نوجوانی و و در موقعی که من در خدمت میکردم خیلی جالبه این دو تا چیزی که واقعا من ریممبر دی فرست وان was uh, probably I just could talk English I think I feel more comfortable uh, is that okay? so I, I remember uh, it was uh, right the um, time of revolution Miss uh, may remember this as well but uh, there was one occasion that you know the uh, the committees started this uh, there was no uh, military there's no uh, There's no police officers. There was really no calendar, none of those type of things. So it's just, just groups of young folks who started ruling the streets, and they called them comité back then, I think. And so what happens at nights too would be this huge uh, call for Allahu Akbar, and they would go around the neighborhoods and things like that. And one of those uh, nights, it was always full of anxiety. We always were very worried about the circumstances. Uh, but one of the nights we we started hearing uh, noises. It was uh, like a mob descending in our in our kuche or alley that we had, and um, then we saw f- uh, people that had fire mashalo they had in their hands, and there was a lot of um, tumult outside. And so we just looked outside, and we noted that people are actually coming to. Um, one of the things that we heard that they go to Baha'i's houses and they burn their, their houses and harm them or they rape their daughters and things like that. So one of the things that we did was try, our house was such that we had that in our Hayat Khalvat or backyard, we had access to a different alley. So through that, we were able to get the sister out of the house. We were worried about the harm that would potentially fall on her befall yeah. and so so she went and then we took one of the neighbors and so anyway she would she we drove them to one of our family members that they actually were uh, Muslim they had ties with Muslims and they were not at risk in a different part of the city and then I remember very vividly that myself my mom and my daddy were in the bathroom really close at the end of the hall I don't remember and probably COH, but trauma sometimes impacts your memory. But what I remember was at, all, in Tehran? all in Tehran, as the, the, this, the mobs call was getting stronger and there was things going on that we actually were praying in the tub in the bathroom. In yeah. which area of Tehran? Do you remember that? It's um, where? It was a Savalon, I think. Yeah, it, it was uh, around, what would the neighbor would be? Nizam. Yeah, Nizam, but those, those areas. And uh, there's actually, there was a, a group of Baha'is who would live in an alley down there that they most from Saison. And so they, they would be easy target because it was, uh, they were actually collectively lived in that neighborhood. We were a little far, but... Um, But it was the same area, so people knew exactly. I mean, Baha'is are always, we always had issues, but it wasn't to this extent that now they're actually there it, um, to burn our house and do whatever that they were planning to do. And so as we were saying prayers and things like that, it, after a while what happened, it started the voices, the calls, uh, the crisis seemingly sort of uh, lessened and disappeared. I think I was uh, probably about 16, 17. Uh, I was third year, I think I was second or third year in high school. And so what happened is, uh, so we came out and we talked. What apparently happened is that some of our neighbors blocked the mob and basically mediated between 
them burning our house, telling that we live with these people for so long, we haven't seen any cause, anything that would, um, would really result in such a cruel act. So that was one event that it was really tra traumatizing because we, as, as we are seeing prayers, and my dad, I think I just remember him, God bless his soul, that he, he, he said, he was talking about, this is where the faith is really tested. Mm -hmm. So I think there was, a, there was a, a posture of peace and contentment and, you know, it's like, uh, whatever comes our way, uh, we are gonna abide by that type of thinking. And it's very clear, it's more emotional in my mind because um, you get some amnesia when you go through this stuff. But that was one event. I think that was a significant event. Even later when I came to the United States, I dealt with some... Your neighbors, you saw your neighbors prevented yes. from you know, attacking your home or attacking yes. your house. Or exactly. So that's, the, that's what exactly, some of the neighbors got in, just got involved and, and uh, we, we've been there for a while, so everybody knew us. We always were the best students, the cleanest kids, never did anything. So we, the family was really, I think in some ways, represented a, a better part of humanity or uh, just be, being, in a sense, a model kids and doing those stuff. So right. people said, we haven't seen anything. And my dad was, dad was very loving. That was a very loving man. So, uh, so that I, I think people loved him and the family. So that was one thing that p people actually intervened, and so we were saved that night. But that was it. That was um, it was really the moment of infliction for our family, whether or not we're going to survive that night. So that was one. Um, the other thing that really came it was the military. So military was actually a very uh, you know in some ways I've been very lucky. In, I had a good handwriting, and I was I joined, I drafted, I was drafted, I joined military. Was it during the war? Yeah, so yeah, during the war. Do you remember what year? Uh, 1981 to 1983. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was drafted, and in fact, all the all the soldiers who had they were completed their diploma. They would become group on three, and I did not, they did not give me any type of rank. And so, but then I was, you know, I was in the, in the base. They were looking for somebody who had good, good handwriting to become Munshi admin back then. So I, I wrote and they liked my, they said, all right, Darius is going to be our, basically the second level commander's Munshi. So I had access to, uh, classified information. And in one of them that came true, it said that if anybody is from the Firghe Zaleh Baha'i, that uh, he or she, he needs to write a letter, confess to that, and actually sign it and bring it to the command. So I wrote a letter, signed it, and my commander came and I gave it to him. And he said that, uh, well, uh, he got really upset. He said, you're doing so well. There's no need for you to do that. Not that you did it, though. We had, can't do anything about it. We have to take you to the command. So we went to command, and there was this, another sarhang. I don't know how you say that in, in probably a colonel. And then he was actually from uh, Shomal, Iran. He was from Gilan. He read it, and he... Um, he got really upset about that. He said that basically my destiny just changed with this letter going. So I'll be under observation, that everything, everybody was trying to do something. They're going to use me. Um, in any case, so that become an issue. Then I found another. Um, uh, it was a master sergeant, sergeant master, that he was from the, when they, my letter went through the command, he became somebody who, was, had oversight over my work. And he became, it was like my number one enemy. And so it, it got really complicated to a point that he, they actually came out. And I was a part of a platoon of about 150 soldiers. And not only they took my thing away, my admin job and things like that, they start uh, being on my case all the time. And so, um, 
In one occasion, they told me that this guy can put a spell on people. So they asked uh, that nobody in my platoon was they had to talk to me. Pretty, pretty much a gag order. Oh, they, 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 they indicated that you have the power. That I have a spell. I that, put the spell on that people. you have the power. Yes. So, so the that, rumor was to tell your buddies and... and, and the platoon and, that nobody oh, had communicated with me. Nobody would talk to me. So they would basically uh, isolate and basically alienate you for that reason. So it took a, took a long time, but um, so that was a whole part. One of the other things that I wasn't aware of, which uh, it was I came actually to be a number one shooter in the base. So they, my name came up to become a sniper. Mm -hmm. Sent me to a school uh, to become a sniper so I can join basically the front. And what happened is that because I was a Baha'i, they declined they rescinded the, the thing because they were afraid um, that I would go there and may do some harm to, to friends and enemies. So I think that's uh, the, the, the biggest part. It was really the whole, I was one out of 3,000 soldiers in that base. Did the attitude of other soldiers, your comrades, change toward you? Well, absolutely. Once they, know, once they knew that you wrote that. You always yeah. have those couple close friends that but the majority you're one in three thousand and you don't receive favors if you're seen by this person so what happens you really create a uh, situation and then I, I would do guard guarding for instance more than other people do and so you get in a lot of other type of trouble but uh, i think um i think these are the type of the things that just two stories i want to share with I left Iran. Oh, in fact, another thing that happened, I left Iran a couple of months after uh, revolution. So through Pakistan, I left Iran. One of the interesting things is that my dad and mom, as you know, they weren't able to leave Iran. So after 17 years, they were able to come. And when they went back, one of the things that they asked my dad to go to the uh, to Setad Markazi, they said that your, your son, Daryush, He's on a list. You got to tell us where he is. So even after, in fact, oh, what happened is that they, I was required after military. That's one of the reasons I actually left. That every month I would go and report where I am, what I do, to basically to the, the we have an intelligent unit in military, and that was one of the reasons that I left. Um, and the uh, the commander, which the colonel that was in charge, that he actually. He, he liked me because I was a Baha'i. He, uh, he protected me, but he got, um, he got executed after I left. But one of the things he said that I think is very important for all the Baha'is, no? When he read it and he said all these things about what a stupid person I was to do that, he said that I've been in military for a long time. My, jo my, my job is to, to train soldiers. Baha'is come as soldiers. So, I mean, you see somebody so stupid that signs up their life in a paper and give it away. That br level of brave, being brave and being um, courageous is just something that he's, he's seen in many Baha'is. So I think that, that was a... Anyway, he got killed, he got executed for... Um, he really took a good care of me, but he was executed and then my name just ended up in a blacklist there. Why did you eventually leave? And when? I left uh, 1983 uh, as a service. I actually have a com uh, accommodations from military. That how, I mean, if that's the thing that it tells uh, which what uh, level of my service and, and my loyalty and all that stuff that happens. Um, so that was it. And after that, just ended up in Pakistan, and the rest is just history.